Okay guys, so I'm going to give you a glimpse into my world right now, which is the world of MCPs on demand. Basically, what I'm going to be talking about is the fact that you can make an MCP that can do anything whenever the fuck you want, basically. This stuff is insane, guys. You really, really need to get on this. Do not be afraid to make your own MCPs. All you need is a file, right? And then inside your client settings.json, you need a way to start that file and a way to call up all of the commands needed. That's literally all an MCP server is. It is not that complicated. So in today's video, basically what I thought I would do is just for a bit of fun and also because I do like the idea of this MCP is I'm going to make an MCP that basically fills in placeholder images with DALI images, right? Or ChatGPT 4.1, whatever. So the way this works is we have the Python SDK, right? You can use this or to be honest with you, it might even be quicker and easier just to use the sequential thinking MCP as a base. I really like the way that this uh, MCP is set out. I'm gonna use the Python SDK just because, um, but yeah, feel free to use that one instead. So basically you can give it the Python SDK, right? And you can say, I want you to make me an MCP similar to my data for SEO MCP, right? Um, let me just get that file. I think it's really important that it has this file. Leave this file on hand, guys. Um, I always have it handy. There it is. So now I'm just looking for the settings one. I hate augment code that it opens up like that. So right click here, copy path. You can study the implementation of my MCPs here. You also have to add the new MCP2 here. The MCP I want you to make should be an image generation MCP using the latest open AI documentation. Here's my open AI API key. All right, so then obviously we'll go and grab one. So I go to playground. I swear I must be on a list for the amount of times I've accidentally searched playground. Uh, when I'm trying to get onto OpenAI. Um, so we'll grab an API key here. Go. Oh my god, that's actually a really good um, idea for a directory, like a playground directory. That's a really good idea, actually. That'll definitely get me on a list. <laughs> Not actually. Um, the MCP I want you to make should be image generation. There we go, OpenAI. Let's just control V, control Z that. Um, perfect. Okay, uh, that should be everything. Um, I'll just remind it. So in fact, I'm not going to remind it to use my current MCPs to do the research. It should have the intelligence to use the system prompt to be able to work that out for itself. I do like to test these things because I don't like to always be over prompting. One thing that I love is like reusable workflows. So in my custom instructions here, I do have like use context seven for this, use this for that, blah, blah, blah. Yo, it's inside the feckin' data for CEO. I believe this is it. Just just read the settings file. It's in there. Okay, so it's reading the client settings. It should be able to find everything from there, as far as I understand it anyway. So it's read it, okay. Wait. You need to read the data for SEO pi file mentioned in there. I don't know why it doesn't just do things all like logically. It's kind of annoying. There we go. So now it's reading the data for SEO MCP. So now I'll understand the implementation. If I can get a very similar implementation here, I'll be pretty happy. And then I can use custom prompts or um, system prompts to tell Klein or Roo when I want it to use this, right? So instead of using placeholder images, generate an image using my OpenAI image generation MCP. Now remember, I am not editing this video pretty much. Wait, hang on, what the fuck is this? Bro, please read latest documentation using context seven first. Come on, bro. Very disappointed. Naughty, naughty Gemini 2.5 Pro preview. I should have words with your, your father. OpenAI Python, perfect. That's what we needed. Actually reading documentation. The reason, if, you, if you're curious, the reason I knew that that was wrong was because it tried to use GPT-4, which, I mean, nobody's used GPT-4 in about a year now, so 
No, thank you. I wanted to use GPT 4.1 image generation if possible. Which seems to be client.images.generate. Let's see what model it uses. It's going to use the wrong model again, I already know. Okay, that's pretty cool. DALI 3. It, it doesn't use DALI anymore, mate. Read the latest about image generation. Oh, wait, it might be GPT-4.0 actually thinking about it. I don't think it is GPT-4.1, right? So it should be GPT... Why is it still using DALI? Does it still use DALI? It literally says right here, GPT-4.0. It doesn't use DALI anymore. Um, wait, I need to actually check if that's true. Um, image generation API. Open AI. GPT image, generate images, GPT image one. So this is the new one, right? Yeah. I don't know why it can't just read things properly. This is the problem with context seven and things like that. Like it just, I don't know, it just never really seems to pass on the information properly. I'm really not sure why. Okay, so we have, I need the model. I just need to see the model. I didn't see the model. GPT image, yeah, perfect. So that's what it says up here, right? GPT image one. Yep, beautiful. Okay, this is pretty cool. So now I should be able to make images whenever I want. This is pretty cool, guys, you've got to admit. I'll show you this in action in just a second. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to add this to your system prompt, how I'm controlling my MCPs, right? Because MCPs are kind of pointless if you have to repeatedly say, I'm sorry, this is light mode, but... If you have to literally say every time, okay, now use this MCP. Okay, now use this MCP. Okay, now use this MCP. This is fucking pointless if you have to sit there. However, if you have a system prompt that says, use this MCP when you need to do this. Use this MCP when you need to do that. Use this MCP when you need to do that. Then you have a workflow that is repeatable and you don't have to sit there and babysit it, right? That's the important thing. Having to sit there and babysit stuff is a no-no. By the way, if you're curious, why do I know so much about automation? I'll tell you right now, guys, I used to bot RuneScape, right? I used to bot RuneScape like there was no tomorrow. I had a whole bot empire. When I was a kid, I used to sell RuneScape accounts. I used to sell RuneScape gold. I, I, was, I was deep into this. It's actually funny, though, because instead of trying to make money in real life, all I did was then just buy more RuneScape gold. <laughs> so, like, I did all these things. I was basically, I had, like, a full-time team and everything. But I was just doing it just to buy more RuneScape gold. But one of the key principles of RuneScape and also of RuneScape automation is not having to babysit, right? The reason being is because you need to be able to leave your bot to run all night. If you don't know RuneScape, getting 99 woodcutting, for example, will probably take like 200 hours at least, right? So you are wasting 12 hours of the day if you cannot also bot overnight, right? The same is true here. This is, these are the kind of things I think about constantly because it, my brain is just so attuned to like this botting thing. Cause I, I, I was doing this when I was like 10 to when I was like 16. Like this was my, this was my thing. This is why I had gotten no sleep at school and stuff. Okay. So this actually should just now be a fully added MCP server. Let's see, let's refresh this. Okay. Now let's say generate me an image to test. So this is the first part. First part is creation. Second part is testing. And then the third part is creating the workflow, right? This is possibly the most important part, so I'll show you that in just a second. I don't know, just, I don't know, a cat in space or some shit. Like, please, just do it. I swear he's just buying time because he knows it's not going to work. Okay. An unexpected keyword background. Yeah, wow. Should have just bloody followed the... The what's it called? I hate that. They always do that. Moderation, use. I don't know if any of those are actual real things. One of the biggest problems with client coding is that it just makes shit up. Got an unexpected background. We just commented that out, no? Oh, it's there too. And there. Okay, we'll just give this a little bit of time to sort its own shit out. 
this is classic um, Klein or classic Gemini. Like, it just has the need to piss around. Like, it's kind of annoying. Okay, this looks a little bit better. This takes a bit of time. I don't know if any of these other ones are real either, like moderation, user, seat context. Okay. Uh, what do you mean? So, so do I need to close that, I guess? Close all these. Open up Visual Studio Code. Click on Client and then click on Client again because aug Augment Code is a piece of shit. Okay, test it. Okay, so unless there's more coding errors here, which I wouldn't be surprised, this should work now. Okay, so I'm trying what's known as a... Um, I'm absolutely sick of this prompt, right? So this is, this is high-level prompt wizardry. I wouldn't expect you guys to understand, but basically what you do is you say, can you just use the fucking documentation and stop making shit up? This works 99.99% .99 of the time, guys, okay? It's a really high level technique, you know, I don't like to confuse people too much, so I won't spend too much time on this. But basically, the, uh, and I'm joking obviously, but this does seem to work, right? I've just basically said, get on with it. Um, I have a feeling user is also, yeah, this is kind of just pissing around right now. It's just, uh, it added a load of crap that doesn't even exist in the documentation, so I'm just going to have to struggle through this. Um, this probably won't happen to you guys if you're just a little bit more careful with your prompting. Maybe try saying something like, don't just make arguments up. Okay, so this seems to be working now. It is now generating an image. Now, I'm not sure what format I'm going to get this image back. So I'll probably need to work on that a little bit as well. But if this is just a link, then you can now easily use this, right? When you're making projects or if you're making a design of something or whatever, you can just use a placeholder or not, not even necessarily a placeholder, depending on how good the output is, right? Because this is the latest... OpenAI image generation model, so the, the content, it should be really, really good here. So what th that now means is, this is just for me personally, right, is that I can now make a website that has all the images and everything already on it, all of the images are all originals, and they should be really, really high quality images as well. Okay, so it gave me B64 back, I believe. Um, I might have to change this myself now. Um, yeah, this isn't good. So what you can do here is I'm going to restore to this point, restore files, right? I'm going to say, hopefully that gets rid of this. I'm going to say, this is now working, but I want the response to be a link. Oh yeah, sorry. I was supposed to restore the file and the conversation. Let's just do that. So restore, restore files and tasks, there we go. All right, so that should get, okay, I don't know if it does get rid of this. Oh, okay, I need to be in a workspace to use checkpoints, so let's just open any folder. Sure, this is fine. Go back and Klein. So this is the really cool thing about Klein is this, um, sometimes you will need to do resets because things like this completely fuck up everything. There's something about B64 formatting, which just makes these things just shit the bed. I'm not really sure what it is. I mean, it's probably just loads of letters that it can't really handle, right? Let's just scroll down here. Go to this checkpoint. So this one, restore files and task. That should get rid of that B64 shit. There we go. This is now working, but I want um, a link to come back, not B64. Check. Weird dogs. Okay, so it's right, rightly pointing out that I cannot use a response format. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it to download the image, right? And save it to a new directory that it will create in order for this process to work, right? Because I don't think B64 images are going to be the best output for us. Now, what I would envision, envisage this being used for is actually loads of stuff. What's really cool is because this is the DALI, not DALI, sorry, image, what is it? OpenAI image gen or ChatGPT image gen. It should be able to edit images as well and also use input images to give you certain outputs. So like this, for example, let's say you have four product images, right? If you're using the Shopify MCP or whatever, you could start to make these kind of banners automatically with what? 
what we're doing right here. So yeah, again, it gave me a B64 response. So again, it's completely freaking out. I'm going to have to tell it not to give me the response and just download the image. Okay, so a couple of things that you guys might want to know. If you are having problems with MCP server and it says not connected, right, when you go here, it just keeps saying not connected. What you actually have to do is you have to run the server manually and give the error to uh, Klein or fix it manually, right? So let's see what the problem is. Line 140. Uh... Yeah, I can't fix this on my own. I've got no idea what the problem is. So again, we'll just send this to client. Same issue. This is something that people don't realize. Just because an MCP server is finished doesn't mean it's actually working. You need to run the Python file or whatever manually and understand what the problem is, right? And therefore, you can feed the error to client and then client can hopefully fix it. Okay, so you can see here now this is starting, right? There was just some in, in, indenting. In, what the hell's the word? Indentation issues. So now if I go back to... <coughs> sorry guys, got a bit of a cold. If I go back to MCP servers, press restart here. Just close this down. You don't need to have this running. So look, if I refresh this, this should now be working. Okay. I fixed it. Please test the MCP server. Okay, let's see if I finally get a, an image instead of a bloody B64. I don't know if this is even possible, guys. I'm still going to release this video because everything I've shown you in this video is extremely useful. It's just this last part of getting a non-B64 image on this particular API isn't working, but that probably won't even be relevant to your specific use case. Okay, there we go. Look, success, saved path. Let's have a look. Oh, I don't know where the hell that is, but where on earth is that image? Where is my image? Oh, it's inside the MCP file, probably, right? So let's see, revealing file explorer. Nope. Uh, where are my images? Okay, there we go. So now it's inside AI images. I can click here. There we go. Beautiful. So now I have my own MCP that at any time can create images and put it inside the working directory. I'm going to test this out on another video, guys. I'm probably going to try and make an entire website. This is really, really cool. I just wanted to show you guys how easy it is to actually make your own MCP. This took me about 45 minutes to an hour, and now I have unlimited access to this MCP. Now, the last thing you want to do, right, is you want to, you want to add this. Add this to my system instructions. Um, tell it to use image generation instead of place hold the images at all times, right? So basically what I've done here is I've, I've improved my flow of WordPress website generation because now I can use Dali, no, not Dali, I keep saying Dali. Dali was such a better name. Now I can use ChatGPT images whenever the hell I want, right? This is so cool. Now it's part of my system workflow, right? My system prompt workflow. And I'm slowly but surely making a whole list of MCPs that I will share with you guys at some point in my own Python SDK. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll leave the video there. This is the final part, by the way, adding it to your system prompt. That's now added to my system prompt. Now, whenever it uses a placeholder image, it will generate an image. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you're watching all the way to the end of the video, you're an absolute legend. I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.